as Allied forces fought their way up through Italy on the way to Rome, they encountered heavily fortified German positions on the Gustav Line. One disastrous stumbling block was an ancient hilltop monastery called Monte Cassino. The resulting carnage made this a brutal engagement no soldier would ever forget. Al Dietrich was with the 36th Texas Division. It was on this Italian hillside that he met the enemy on the battlefront. September 3rd, 1943, as Allied armies complete their conquest of Sicily, they prepare to invade Italy itself. Two divisions of the British 8th Army cross to the southern tip of Italy, where they encounter only minor German resistance. That same day, the Italian government surrenders. On September 9th, the 5th Army, composed of three American and three British divisions, launches an amphibious assault on the west coast of Italy at Salerno Bay, 30 miles south of Naples. One of the soldiers in combat for the first time with the 36th Texas Division is Al Dietrich. The invasion at Salerno Bay on September the 9th was, I imagine, like any other invasion, but we did not know what to anticipate. We knew we were going into combat, but what was combat? We had no idea, really. We had been conditioned to peak, and we were ready to go. Any more training, we would have been overtrained. So we were ready. I, uh, I knew I was going to go into combat now, and uh, this was going to be the beginning of the end of the war. For nearly a week, the Allies are surrounded by the Germans. However, the U.S. sends in air power and combined with the big guns of the British Navy, they break out of the stranglehold. We had not been on shore hardly an hour when we heard the thunder of tanks. October 1st, the 5th Army marches victoriously into the city of Naples. It is an important strategic point because it will provide a perfect port for landing men and supplies once it is cleared of the destruction left behind by the Germans. There is confidence that the Allies will get to Rome within two months. However, the Germans mobilize all their units in Italy. They must be ready to counteract any Allied breakthrough. When the Allies invaded Italy, Adolf Hitler thought at first of uh, withdrawing all the German troops in southern Italy to the north. But uh, Kesselring, who was the uh, commander-in-chief in Italy, uh, talked him into letting him retreat slowly. Kesselring was successful in keeping the Allies to a very slow advance. Under Field Marshal Albert Kesselring's plan, the Germans are to make the Allied advance as costly as possible. Risking only small forces, they take hilltop positions in the Italian countryside. From these strongholds, they are able to strafe their attackers with impunity. When their own positions are seriously threatened, they simply withdraw a mile or two and repeat the process. They are always protected by the terrain, while the Allies are in the open, where they are hit over and over again. Every man has his own battle. There's a war out there and there's a battlefront. Your unit is committed, but you as an individual are committed. And you are going to encounter a enemy right in front of you. And that's what happened to me. October, 1943. The Allies are meeting progressively stiffer resistance in their push into the heart of Italy. The German withdrawal is not going to be a simple retreat. As they leave a position, engineers and labor battalions are building a strong defense barrier, which becomes known as the Gustav Line. The only thing in the Allies' favor is a strong and aggressive air force. 
But in mid-November, cold rain and even snow begins to fall. With these inclement flying conditions, the Air Force is of little help. Even on the ground, American tanks get bogged down in the mud. Before they even encounter the Gustav line, the Allies recognize the slowing momentum and pause for some rest and regrouping. With Rome still 90 miles away and progress at a halt, none of the troops believe they will be in the Eternal City within two months. Meanwhile, everyone suffers from the conditions. The Leary Valley is the most critical defensive position on the Gustav Line. Monte Cassino, an 1,100-foot peak, guards the entrance to the best approach to Rome through this valley. They had labor battalions that used to prepare defense positions if the Germans had to fall back to them. We didn't have that, but then again, we never really fell back. The Germans have placed large guns inside natural and man-made caves and have well-protected machine gun nests all over the mountain. Everywhere else, the slopes are lined with miles of barbed wire and thousands of anti-personnel mines. The most difficult issue for the Allies is the presence of an historic monastery sitting on top of the mountain. This site, holy to Christians all over the world, is where St. Benedict founded the Benedictine Order of Monks in the 6th century. If the Allies damage or destroy the structure in the heat of battle, they risk offending a large part of the religious world. December 1st, the move forward resumes. The 5th Army launches an attack on its next objective, a group of hills behind Monte Cassino. The key to this range is Monte Camino. In a major assault, nearly 1,000 big guns direct their fire on this hillside. The idea of the Germans being on the high points on the mountains in this terrible terrain meant that they could see the approaches, and there are few places in Italy where a, an army can advance, and since the Germans could see those very clearly, it was very easy for them to block those routes of advance. And so Monte Cassino uh, was very important to the Germans. The Germans were quoted as saying, what did you hate most about the American army? And they said, the artillery. They just fired so many, so many shells at that mountain. I guess they call it Million Dollar Hill, yeah. With the Million Dollar Hill taken, Americans advance to the more open country beyond Monte Camino. But the smaller hills are even more fortified and harder to take. It's not until the middle of January that the last of these hills falls. One mile away is the Rapido River, and right behind that lies Monte Cassino. The 5th Army, using eight divisions, has taken six weeks to advance eight miles, suffering nearly 16,000 casualties. But now there's a new aggressive push a simultaneous amphibious landing is set to take place at Anzio, 30 miles to the north. The troops already moving through the Italian hills must launch an immediate offensive against the Gustav Line to draw the German reinforcements away from the Anzio area. The 36th Division is to spearhead the drive. Troops like Al Dietrich are conserving their strength. You didn't wait for a night to sleep. There was a system that all our infantry units used, the buddy-buddy system. The two of you per foxhole. One slept while the other one stayed on guard. And you decided among yourselves whether you want to sleep two hours or three or four. Our commanding general, General Walker, he says, it's been written that no river that has been used as a main line of defense has ever been breached in history. So I think that pretty well sums it up, that there had to be a different strategy to cross that river or get to the enemy on the other side of that river. With the heavily fortified Monte Cassino looking down on them, the troops have to hope there will be another strategy. On 
January 20th, 1944, Allied troops camped at the Rapido River make a concerted attack on the Gustav Line at the German stronghold of Monte Cassino. They want to break through the line, but they must also create a diversion and tie up German units while other American and British soldiers make a landing at Anzio. The toughest assignment falls to the 36th Division. Uh, the regiment jumped off on schedule. Every man was supposed to carry an extra bandolier ammunition across with him, uh, which is like an invasion. It was just an invasion across the river of the enemy side, just like coming in Salerno, you brought extra ammunition. They managed to get the most of one battalion across, but the other battalions had difficulty, the same as the 141st. Artillery, poor visibility, equipment getting shot up, didn't get into more lives while sensing direction. The Germans could hear the movement of some 1,500 to 2,000 troops moving in the night. And they had pre-registered all of their artillery on that river. And they just opened up. German artillery prevents the building of a pontoon bridge across the river. All boats, footbridges, and telephone wires are destroyed. The men who have gotten to the German side of the river run out of ammunition. They try to return, but only the strong swimmers are able to get to safety. In this operation, 1,681 men of the Texas Division are lost. The only benefit of the battle is that the Allied assault on Casino succeeds in bringing more German reinforcements to the Gustav Line and making the landing at Anzio easier. Still bogged down, the Allies plan a second attack on Monte Cassino. But the question of the monastery on top of the mountain plagues the Allies. The bombing of the monastery, uh, I agree with General Walker, our commander, said, well, the Abbey is not being manned by Germans, so they're just observers. But if we bomb the Abbey and destroy it, they still remain up there. The height is still there. You can't flatten the mountain. The decision is made that the 10-foot thick walls will give the Germans a second line of defense, so the monastery must be bombed. On February 14th, leaflets are dropped to the abbot, five monks and 200 refugees living in the monastery. They are warned that the site will be attacked and no specific date is given. The 80-year-old abbot asks the Germans to provide an escort to safety. He is assured they will have their escort within two days. The next day, with everyone still inside the monastery, both the Allied troops and the Germans hear the sound of bombers approaching. certainly uh, was on target and completely destroyed it. But later, as General Clark said, you can't move the enemy out with bombing alone. You have to have infantry go in. And when all the dust settled and the infantry tried to make their moves, the Germans were still there. Since no one has been notified of the timing of the air assault, the unprepared British troops see this as an opportunity to attack but they are at half strength, and their advance comes with a terrible cost in lives. They advance on the north to within 1,000 yards of Monte Casino and the railroad station on the south end of the town of Casino, but they can advance no further. The second attack on Monte Casino has ended in a deadlock. When the bombing failed to result in taking the hill, the Germans moved into the monastery, and so they used the 
ruined Abbey now as a defensive position. March 15th, the Germans still hold the town of Casino at the foot of the mountain. 500 Allied planes hit the town with 1,400 tons of bombs. Strategic bombers, as their names imply, are used really to to take out industry and to take out uh, the civilian will to resist. But here, this was an, an experiment of sorts. This is the first time that they were used in support of ground troops. In the wake of the surprise bombing, a full-scale attack is launched against the stunned enemy. Finally, Monte Cassino falls. Indian Gurkha troops clamber halfway up Monte Cassino itself to occupy a spur of the mountain called Hangman's Hill. It looks like victory is inevitable, but bad luck prevails. A reserve battalion fails to receive orders to join the assault. The initial momentum is lost. The German 1st Paratroop Division seizes the opportunity to swarm down the mountain slopes to counterattack Allied strong points. The condition of the German troops was excellent. They had turned back two very strong Allied attacks. The Gustav line was still in operation. It was still invulnerable. It was still impregnable. And the German soldiers were in excellent condition. They just felt they had, they had to turn back the Allies and uh, nobody could dispossess them of that ground. On March 23rd, the third offensive against Monte Cassino is called off as winter descends on Italy. During the following weeks, there are no major actions. Sitting out the bad weather, the Allied commander in Italy, British General Sir Harold Alexander, strengthens his forces along the Gustav Line. The Germans think he has six divisions, but he is able to assemble 13. You have to do things in combat uh, that uh, you don't, well, you don't know what the outcome is going to be, really. And, but you have to try them sometime. Uh, the bombing of the Abbey, to me, was nothing as compared to the crossing of the Rapido, where so many lives were at stake. On May 11th, the final major assault begins. Between the sea and the mountains, the U.S. Second Corps on the left flank moves forward, but is stopped. To its right, the French Corps treks over the Arun Sea Mountains to catch the Germans by surprise. It threatens to weaken the Leary Valley defenses. In the center, the 13th British Corps crosses the Rapido below Casino. And to the north, the Polish Corps swings behind Monte Cassino. finally took Monte Cassino in the month of May. What General Alexander did was to move the 8th Army from the east coast of Italy across the mountains over into the west part of Italy. And so you had the 5th and the 8th Armies concentrated and they attacked in May. There was a French corps of soldiers and the French outflanked the defenders of Monte Cassino, once you cut off a position, those people, they have two options. They can 
surrender or they can try to get out. And so once the French cut the Leary Valley, then that was the time for the Germans to retire. The Polish and British troops closed their pincers behind Monte Cassino on May 18th, but the German garrison escapes, slipping out just before the gap is closed. It is the Polish Corps which finally takes possession of Monte Cassino. The only Germans they find are the wounded left behind to surrender. The Germans retreat to a secondary defense position six miles behind the Gustav Line, the Adolf Hitler Line. But the Allied push is relentless and unstoppable. The Germans go into headlong retreat. Along with the American 5th Army's victory at Anzio, the Allied troops push on through Italy. On June 4, 1944, the American 5th Army marches into Rome. Two days later, on D-Day, the other armies of the Allies land in Normandy. Overshadowed by the monumental invasion on the French coast, the Battle of Cassino is just another episode of World War II. Soon after Cassino, Al Dietrich would be transferred out of combat infantry. I was assigned to a, a Arden Transport Company transferring uh, armor to uh, armored units, tanks, half tracks. I always felt for the infantryman because I knew what he was going through. I think that living as the infantryman has to live is even harder than dying. The Battle of Monte Cassino is remembered by many for its destruction of a historic place of worship but others honor the tremendous sacrifice of soldiers from many nations who are willing to give their lives in the service of their countries. It also serves to remind future generations that on a battlefront, there is no shortage of destruction and suffering.